I think something that we need to make sure people know is what are the different mushroom parts. Are we going to tell them or are we just going to say, well, you got to guess. <laughs> I think we should tell them. Oh. Hey everyone, we've got a special guest here today. <laughs> this is my son Marcus. He's in second grade. Hi. Um, today um, we're going to be learning about mushrooms okay. and we're going to have, like, we're going to go mushroom hunting and we're going to see what we can find. Yes! Mom bird's nest. Ooh, yes, we need to collect some of that. These are called, this is a mushroom called bird's nest. I know it's not a real bird's nest. There, I think the reason they call it that is because it kind of looks like a bird's nest and because in some you can see tiny little eggs. What are, the, like what are the eggs? I think they're like little spore balls. Yeah, a little capsule with spores on the inside, exactly. Yes. Spores but are basically mushroom seeds. They are. And mycelium is basically mushrooms roots. Yeah. How do the how do the little eggs get out of there? Do they just stay stuck? Um, I don't know. You don't know. You don't how do you know. think? How do you think those little eggs get out? It's a good question. Mm -hmm. I know the answer. Okay, let's see here. Well, what's one thing mushrooms love? Rain. rain. These mushrooms especially love rain because when the rain drops hit inside there, the eggs splash out. So those little capsules splash out, land different places, and then open up and all the spores can go. Mom? And create more mushrooms. Why do the, why do birds and nest only grow on wood? Oh, because that's their substrate. Substrate is their preferred home, their habitat. And I think I see a little egg. I think I do too. So what they're doing is they're actually getting nutrients and energy from this dead and dying wood. Ah. We are making this video to dedicate it to Miss Olin and Miss Duran's second grade class at Whitson Elementary. Yes. Yep. And we're just hoping that people can learn a little a bit about mushrooms, looking for mushrooms, uh, how important they are, and how beautiful they can be too, right? Pretty. Pretty. So what is a mushroom? Uh, it's its own kingdom and it's a fungi. A fungi. What if you want to say it fungi or fungi or fungi? Is that okay? You can say it however you want? Yeah. Cool. So it's a fungi or a fungi and it's in its own kingdom. So when you study life, things are categorized into different kingdoms. There's plants and there's animals and other kingdoms, and fungi is its own kingdom. Yes. Now, was there a time where even scientists thought that mushrooms were plants? Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally? <laughs> it's true, and it wasn't even that long ago. Do you know well, I know you know, but I wonder if anyone else knows. There was another really big thing that happened in the science world about 50 years ago where a rocket went into space and a guy landed and walked on the moon. On the moon. There was enough technology and knowledge in science to put a man on the moon to walk, but they still thought that mushrooms were plants. Pretty silly, huh? But that year... There was a guy who wrote a scientific paper and he said, nope, they're their own thing. They're a thing called fungus. It's their own kingdom. This is my mushroom shirt. So there we go. We've got a guy landing on the moon and mushrooms because fungi became their own kingdom in 1969. Yeah. There you go. Have a seat. Mom, I found a morel. What? I found a morel. Mom, I told my class, I told Cal and Bruno that we would do one where it's like, can you find it? So we should do oh, it. Okay, so we need to step away. How about you stand over there and I'll stand over here 
And Uncle Zach will film far out and we'll say, there's a morel somewhere between us. Can you spot it? Okay, you want to say that? Yeah. Are you ready? Okay, there's a morel somewhere between us. Can you find it? They're hard to spot. How long do we give them? Uh, Why don't you walk in and slowly point to it? Your time is running out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get my watch. It's right here. This is what a fresh morel looks like. Well, morels are really hard to find. So if you go to a spot where you think there could be morels, oh, I see another one. No way. Literally. <gasps> oh, right behind Uncle Zach. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, don't stop. Can you see it? <laughs> I think that's important to point out. A lot of times you find morels when you squat down and you're going slow, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just have to sit down and look. And whenever I pick a morel, I'm always looking around while I'm picking. And all the mushrooms that we've been showing so far, we've been pulling out of the ground to show the entire thing because you need to see the entire thing in order to identify it. But what's another way you can harvest a mushroom if you already know what it is? You can use a mushroom knife. You can use a knife and, and, and cut it off. Yeah. Okay, so what about spores? Um, they're little tiny, they're kind of like tiny, tiny pollen grains. Like little pollen grains, that's exactly right. And that's how mushrooms reproduce is by releasing their spores. Mushroom seeds. Like mushroom seeds, exactly. Mom? Yeah. How do morels produce their spores? Ooh, that's a great question. Do they have gills? No. Do they have pores? No. Do they have spines? No. <laughs> so how do you think it happens? I don't know. Do they so, come out of the little holes? Exactly. So inside each of those little pits, the spores are produced and released. Ah, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. These are crown cups. And sometimes when you blow into them, they make like, they shoot out their spores and it looks like smoke. Mm -hmm. why, do they, why do they shoot out their spores when you blow air into them? Because then the wind, I think because then when the wind comes out, the spores will travel on the yeah, air. Yeah, they think it's wind or they think it's something walking by. So they want to take that opportunity to release their spores to be carried away. Yeah. Look at them, they're kind of a little bit purpley violet on the inside. So Spoiler. violet crown cup are what these are called. So Marcus and I are going to blow into them and you might get to see spores firsthand. See a little bit? Oh, do you oh, see it? Oh, yes. Whoa. So Marcus's breath is stimulating or agitating the inside of the crown cup and it's telling itself, hurry, release your spores, hurry, release your spores. So his breath isn't pushing them out, it's just telling him that it's time to go. Try this one here. Whoa. <laughs> That was so good. The spores coming out of that mushroom were white. Mushrooms can have all different colors of spores. And something that you can do is make a spore print to figure out what color of spores your mushroom might have. This would be a fun activity to try at home with adult supervision. All you need to do, take a mushroom and put the spore bearing surface down. Now remember, the spore bearing surface is usually the gills, pores, or the teeth. You put that down on a piece of paper, cover it with a bowl, leave it there for a couple of hours or even for a whole day. And then when you remove the mushroom, there might be a spore deposit left behind and you get to see what color those spores are.
And you said something about mycelium. What's that? It's the whole fungus. It's the whole fungus. It's the whole organism. It's like a forest. Yeah, it is like a forest. And it, and it grows and expands, but we can't see it. And then sometimes it produces mushrooms, mushrooms which is kind of like a tree is the whole organism. And sometimes it might produce a fruit. Mom, let's just go show them what mycelium looks like. Yeah, let's go find some. Mycelium! There we go. It kind of looks a little bit like a spider web. And it's all over. It's in the ground. It's connecting the trees to each other. Mushrooms are fungus, correct? Yes. Yeah. But do all fungus, does all mycelium produce mushrooms? Uh, no. Nope, not all the time. There are lots of different types of fungi or if, fungi, and only it, some of them have mushrooms that come up like their fruit. So another way that mushrooms and fungi are not like plants is, what do we see on a lot of these plants? Green. And what color are they? Green. What does that green help them do? Photosynthesize. Photo Mushrooms don't photosynthesize. Mm -hmm. They can't make their own food. How do they get their food? How do they get their energy? They steal it. They can steal it. What else can they do? Get energy from dead logs. Yeah, get energy from dead things. They can decompose stuff. And what's one other way? I don't know. They can get their energy by connecting to the root systems of trees and plants and they exchange nutrients. They have, in a sense, they have a digestive system. They have a belly. Not the same as we do. They digest the stuff on the outside of their mycelium and then they slurp it up to the inside of the mycelium. There's a perfect example of how mycelium and the roots of trees and plants help each other out. There's a specific plant we saw earlier. Do you want to go show them? Is it the calypso? Yeah. Let's go. Over here we have a bunch of calypso orchids. You probably won't see this many around like in the normal nature, but there's also some big brown mushrooms here. And there are lots of calypsos over there, there, there. So this is more than you usually see? Yes, this is way more than you usually see. And calypsos are a good sign for morels. So one thing that's interesting, I don't know if you shared this with Uncle Zach, but you notice it only has one green leaf? Oh yeah. That's but where it photosynthesizes. But what happens, that leaf will eventually go away. How does it get its nutrients after that? Mushrooms? Mm -hmm. The mycelium. Wait, they have a connection with each other. And does they it steal the nutrients that the mushrooms stole from trees? <laughs> no, actually it's part of a special kind of fungus and mycelium that has like a friendship. And you look around and you see these trees and these plants and these flowers. Almost every single one you see out here has a friendship with a fungus and they exchange so, nutrients with each other and they help each other gather water and minerals and grow and thrive even better than they would on their own. So like th that big patch of calypsos over there mm -hmm. would help mushrooms? They help each other out. Another yeah. way that plants and mushrooms are different is plants help make something really important that we breathe in. Air. What is it called technically? Uh, oxygen. oxygen. And then when we breathe out, what do we breathe out? Carbon dioxide. Yeah. So the trees do the opposite, huh? They take in carbon dioxide and they release oxygen. Mushrooms, guess what? What? They take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Yay. So it sounds like mushrooms are a little more like us than they are like plants. Did you know? that they are more closely related to humans, animals, than they are to plants? No. Yup. No. Yeah, mushrooms are more closely related to animals than they are to plants. Mm. Pretty incredible, huh? So, this top is called? The cap. This is called? 
the stem. And what are these here? Those are gills. What happens on those gills? I think that's where the spores are made. Yeah, they're made and that's where they're released out into the winds. Mm. Ooh, what's this smell like to you? Ew, moldy socks! What? You are joking. It smells like cucumber. Wait, what was... Smells like mold, a little bit moldy cucumber. <laughs> a little bit moldy cucumber. Like cucumber and mold. <gasps> Baby mushroom! All right, let's talk about the parts of a mushroom. Oh, like head and feet. Mm -hmm. Head, feet, nose. Where are all those on a mushroom? Eyebrows. <laughs> we already talked about the cap, the stem, and the gills. The gills are the area where spores are made and then released out. Now some mushrooms, instead of gills, will have pores. Like the poor chini. <laughs> there is a mushroom called a poor chini and it has pores. Very good. <laughs> Pores can be different shapes and sizes and colors. They are tiny holes on the underside of a mushroom cap. That's where the spores are produced and released from in those mushrooms. Other mushrooms have little things called spines. 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 Like in a hedgehog mushroom. Yes, there's a mushroom called a hedgehog mushroom and it has adorable little spines under the cap. Those spines are what produce the spores and release them. So all that area underneath the cap is the spore bearing surface. That's important to know. So when you're looking at a mushroom, one of the parts you want to examine is what's going on under the cap. You also want to examine the stem of a mushroom, right? What might be on the stem of a mushroom? A skirt. A skirt. Yes. Or a tutu. Or a tutu. Some mushrooms dress up fancy, don't they? Yes. <laughs> don't worry, this is totally true. This is totally true. Here, we'll show some pictures, but I also brought this so that they can maybe see some the example of this mushroom right here. Some of you might recognize this mushroom. Uh, this is the Amanita muscaria, and it's not a pretend mushroom. It's really what it looks like. It's a red mushroom with white dots on it. You can see here it has a little skirt. I'll also show a picture of a mushroom with a, mushroom with a real skirt. Mom, what's it from? What's the skirt from? Yes. Oh, well this little piece of tissue used to cover the underside of the mushroom and when the mushroom grew up, the tissue broke away and left behind a little skirt. Aww. That's cool, huh? But you know what? There's also sometimes tissue at the very base of the stem and spots on the top of a mushroom. That's also from something called a veil that covers the entire mushroom. So this mushroom here, it's not a red mushroom with white spots. It's a red mushroom with white tissue on it. Let's do an experiment. I'll show you. Okay. So blow it up just a little bit. Just like that much. And then hold it. Okay. Can you hold it? Don't, don't tie it. Just hold it. Hold it like this. Then you're going to cover it like this. This is like the mushroom and has a little veil. Tissue paper. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm spray some water on there. Can you hold it out so I don't get you wet? Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna blow the balloon up more. And now shrink it back down. Look and at that. Spine. Doesn't it look just like those mushrooms? <laughs> Yours is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. But mom, the veils don't get water on them. Yeah, it rains. Oh. When you find a mushroom that has white spots on it like that and you can pull it off, it's because that was a veil covering the mushroom. Pretty cool, huh? Do I keep this? You can keep it. <laughs> so when you find a mushroom and you want to figure out what it might be, you need to look at all its parts. Yeah. The cap, what's going on under the cap, yeah. its spore bearing surface, 
the stem. Does the stem have a skirt? Hmm, uh, gotta look for one. Not all mushrooms have them, but some do. And is there any evidence that a mushroom used to be in a veil? Like, are there any spots on top or any tissue left on the bottom? Those are the basic parts of a mushroom. In fact, did you know that the largest living organism is a fungus? No, you are wrong. It's actually a type of tree connected in with its roots. Oh, you're talking about the aspen trees. That is largest by mass, but largest by area covered is mycelium. What? Yes, and it's in Oregon. So just neighboring to us in central Oregon, and it is so large, it is all the same organism underneath the ground. That's why it took people so long to figure it out. It covers the area of 1,350 soccer fields. But it's not the actual mushroom itself that's that big. It's the mycelium, it's the organism underneath the ground. It would be weird if a mushroom was that big. It would be weird. In fact, somebody asked me what the biggest mushroom is, and I'm not entirely sure, but I know we've come across some pretty large ones before, huh? Especially growing on trees. I think we need to make sure we talk about safety. We're being safe by keeping our whistles with us. Keeping our whistles with us. And if us. we need to, we can go if you're lost. If you're lost. If you're not sure where you are, you can blow your whistle. A lot of times when you go look for mushrooms, you're not right on the trail. A whistle is super important. Do you know what the universal symbol for help me is? It's three strong blasts. Ready? Three strong blasts all together. Go. Or this. <laughs> a whistle goes a long way compared to your voice. Another way to be safe is go places you're familiar with. I am not familiar with in there because I've never gone in there. Oh wait, I found a centipede in there. <laughs> Have a map oh. or GPS. Mm -hmm. Things like that are safe. safe. Be with an adult, a responsible adult. How else can we be safe? <laughs> Wear warmer clothes. <laughs> yes. Don't eat any of the mushrooms while you're out in the woods, Skipper. <laughs> is it okay to touch the mushrooms? Yes. It and is. then don't lick your fingers. Yeah, exactly. Just wash your hands after you've touched them. <laughs> there is one mushroom you don't want to touch. The, the poison, cat. no, the poison fire coral. It'll like make your hands swell up and give you like awful like burning sensation. That's why it's called fire. Yeah. It doesn't grow here though. It only grows in Korea, Japan, and Australia. And it's a super rare mushroom. But everything we have around here is okay to touch. It's okay to touch. We don't have a ton of different colors here today, but just look at a few of these pictures. Mushrooms literally come in a rainbow of colors. There are some mushrooms that look just like coral in the ocean. There are some mushrooms that when you break them, they ooze different liquid. There are some that when they are scratched, they bruise different colors. This one here changes blue when you run your finger across it. There are some mushrooms that glow in the dark. So far they found around over a hundred different species that glow in the dark, and we have some of those in our area. I'm not sure what the smallest mushroom is, but I have found some pretty tiny ones before, and you really have to take your time and look closely to spot those. And even though mushrooms appear pretty delicate, even when you handle them, it seems like they can break apart pretty easy, they are incredibly strong. Mycelium actually has the ability to break through rock, and there are some ink cap mushrooms that if they are trying to fruit beneath concrete, can break it. Mushrooms can grow all different types of places, in soil, on trees, and sometimes mushrooms even grow from other mushrooms, like in this picture here. 
Being respectful and responsible with the mushrooms, we pulled these mushrooms up because we were gonna examine them and learn about them and use them for education. But a respectful thing, if you're not gonna do that, leave the mushrooms where they are. There's no need to pull them up. Take lots of photos instead. I'm sure you guys can think of a lot of other respectful and responsible things to do in the woods, like not leaving any trash. Often we end up picking up other people's trash as we go along. That's another way to also be kind. Being kind to the woods, in the mushrooms, just like you would with your friends. And even though there are mushrooms that you can eat, which is pretty cool, that's not the entire point. The point is to go out and have fun like a little Easter egg hunt. See what different colors you can find, what different shapes you might find. Take lots of photos, enjoy nature just as it is. Also, appreciate that mushrooms and fungus are helping feed the trees and the forest around us and keep things healthy in our ecosystem. There's so much about mushrooms and fungus that is still unknown. Science is just starting to learn about how these amazing organisms communicate and live in the forest. And maybe you guys will be people who discover something new about mushrooms or discover a new species. There's so much that's still unknown. And I hope that you can go out and enjoy the woods in a totally new way. Bye. I hope everyone in my class is watching this. <laughs> and yes, I know my mom is watching this in Mrs. Olney's class. Hi, Mom, and hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna end the video with the cub code. Is that right? Because it's, it's good for at school, but also when you're out in the woods. Be safe, be respectful. Wait, is that it? I don't know. You know okay, ready? <laughs> be safe, be respectful, be responsible, be kind, and always, always do your, your best. best. Go Cubs and have a great mushroom hunt! But essentially they're little holes and that's where the Mom, spores are produced. you're sending this to kids. They don't know what like essentially means.